Uh, my name is Krzysztof, and I'm going to present uh, a presentation to you uh, about Flutter. How many of you do know Flutter, or do know what Flutter is? Okay, how many of you have coded something in Flutter? That's fair. I was expecting maybe one, two, two people. It's not a very mainstream thing to do. But I'm going to talk about Flutter and the possibility of a true multi-platform development with this technology. Um, first, a little bit about myself. I know the quality of the screen is not the best, but uh, I'm going to tell you what's, what's written over there. Uh, I'm a front-end engineer since a lot, uh, I guess, uh, about 10 years ago, I mainly uh, been dealing with the front-end systems, not exclusively, but I would say 80% of my professional career was were front-end systems. And I realized I basically like doing what the picture says, pressing buttons to change the, to make the pattern of lights to change however I want. So some of you might think, well, front-end engineering is, is crap. It's just moving pixels and claiming like, oh, rounded corners are a new thing. But I take pride in actually building this kind of systems. And that's why I'm doing mobile development since uh, 2018. I've been a Flutter developer since uh, 2000, uh, October 2018. Um, first part-time and hobbyist and started full-time working on Flutter in March this year. Uh, I'm also a community organizer. I'm organizing a local, local pub meetup of Flutter, um, which just happened uh, last week, and we'll have another, another one happening in about a month. So you're all invited if you're in Wrocław. There are also other, other Flutter meetups around the Poland in Poznań, Łódź, Warsaw, Gdańsk, and Krakow. Uh, and possibly other conferences or other meetups that speak about Flutter. I'm also organizing Flutter Europe, which is a conference dedicated exclusively to Flutter, which is going to happen in January uh, 2020 in Warsaw. Uh, I'm also a technical speaker. As you can see, <laughs> I'm, I'm basically presenting to you, but I, throughout the year, I basically go to meetups uh, around the Europe or conferences and try to speak about Flutter. Nobody pays me for doing this. I just like, actually the first job of being a Flutter developer, a freelancer, pays for the rest of this. Uh, but it's worthwhile. It's a really nice thing to do, to talk to people, meet people around, and uh, especially in the Flutter, which is a new technology and the community isn't that great. I mean, this isn't that great, that large. Um, so what is Flutter? Wikipedia says it's UI software development kit created by Google, which tells you nothing really, because UI software development kits come and go, and it's made by uh, made by Google, so it might come and go <laughs> whenever whenever Google decides to. I hope not that uh, not that early, but let's see, you know, uh, how it develops. Currently, Google puts lots of money in this, so uh, my job depends on it right now. And I don't think don't think they'll just cancel uh, cancel the project right now. They have some events planned, so so possibly it's not going to be announcement of hey we need to cancel Flutter and there's a new thing that's not ready yet. And uh, yeah, it was first announced in May 2015. Actually, it started quite a bit earlier, uh, and parts of it that got integrated in Flutter started uh, I think in around 2000. So first the graphics engine that basically got developed and so on. Uh, and well later this was acquired by Google and Google started experimenting with things. And uh, yeah, they first announced it publicly in uh, May 2015. And only since 2018, the development speed actually got pretty fast. So they announced first beta version uh, in February and several other beta and, uh, dev and uh, preview releases throughout the year, ending in Dece December when they <laughs> announced they have a stable 1.0 version. And currently, um, what's it, uh, 11 months in, they have uh, version 1.9.1. 1. 
actually the head version uh, that's not stable yet this is already 1.10 point something we'll check later um, but this this development goes really fast and since a year ago uh, many bridges have been crossed actually to bring you flat air in current shape so Flutter is written in Dart if you're just using it. So if you use Flutter, you'll be writing in Dart. And Dart is this combination of JavaScript, Java, and Swift, I guess, somewhere in between all of these languages. Um, it's object-oriented and it's highly composable, so uh, that's at least how Flutter was written in Dart, to compose widgets and widgets one into another to create huge trees. But there's also C and C++ parts to Flutter. This part is not, not something that you commonly interact with. You can basically write great Flutter apps without even touching the C++ part of it. But if you try to explore something new, for example, develop Flutter for a new platform, you need to actually dig into the C++ code. It's highly performant. Since actually it was announced in 2015, that was one of the focal points of Google to show that it can perform really well on mobile devices, which well, some mobile devices go at 120 frames per second. It could be shown in 2015 already that Flutter can actually render this number of frames uh, per second. And yeah, of course, there's, uh, there are some problems that you can introduce, like some underperforming code, uh, doing things on the UI threads that you shouldn't be doing on the UI threads that can lower this, but it's really easy to preserve at least 60 FPS which is what modern mobiles actually support, mostly model, uh, most of the modern mobiles. And it's multi-platform. So this is actually something I'm going to talk about. Yeah, I know the small font is not really great, uh, really visible here. But there's Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, Linux, Google, Fuxia, and the web. This is also taken from uh, Wikipedia. And I'll show you parts of this, how this works, and why Flutter actually can be the engine and SDK uh, that you not only use on two platforms, and call it cross-platform uh, mobile development, but you can run actually on pretty much any platform. There's also a project of Flutter running on Raspberry Pi, which is not that hard to do. It basically runs on Linux on Raspberry Pi but it just needs to get compiled on that machine. And what, how it works, oh, Flutter is like an onion. So it has many layers. And mo as I said, most of the things front-end developers interact with is the Dart layer, the framework, which contains all the widgets, um, code handling, animations, everything related to the UI, something, uh, some code related to how actually it runs, called the foundation. But underneath, it passes, it passes its work, especially work on drawing things to the C++ engine beneath, which is doing all the composing work of frames that get rendered. And yeah, lots of, uh, lots of management that's important for being multi-platform. So it's not yet another JavaScript framework that uses a JavaScript VM to somehow bridge the gap between the native and its code. It's actually a C++ engine underneath. And below C++, there's also a part of, uh, this is below this engine, there's a part called the embedder which is really low-level interface to the machine. So to sometimes to the kernel, uh, like you know, threads, uh, how to create threads, how to perform event loops if the, if the kernel supports that, uh, some setup of this renderer surface used up in the stream. 
And yeah, the Dart code on the very top also gets compiled down to machine code. It doesn't get interpreted in a runtime, although it, got, it does somewhat. So there's, there are two, uh, two modes of compilation, the just-in-time and ahead-of-time. Just-in-time is there for development purposes, for supporting hot reload, and it, uh, it uh, has an incremental optimization of its code. So actually, after several runs of the same code, it achieves almost the exact performance of ahead-of-time code, apart from some checks that are not disabled. So it still goes through some checks, and code that's basically stripped away in release mode. And in release mode, we use ahead-of-time compilation, which basically compiles down to machine code everything. And there's only a thin layer, which I'll explain in a short moment, of connecting the machine code in Flutter to whatever interface we have on native platforms. There's also tree shaking in ahead of time, which is also something that, that many people are accustomed to and helps with optimizations. There are two ways Flutter actually interacts with platforms. Um, one is called uh, platform channels. And it's a high-level interface to code running on the other side. So on the other side, I mean native code. And it's code that you need to actually write uh, yourself in all the platforms that you want to support. And in Dart code, this looks fairly easy. This is an example taken from this site, uh, from official site of Flutter, which um, invokes some remote method. And this, in this line, we have invoke method get battery level. And that's, uh, that's something that we actually implement on the native side, possibly in Java, Kotlin, uh, or Objective-C, or Swift, uh, that does pretty much the reverse, only passes through, some, uh, passes through some messages. So this is kind of a message passing way of interacting with the platform. And it's not really that performant. So you cannot, for example, uh, transfer from the native side 60 frames per second of full screen animation, redraw it on a Flutter side and expect it to be very performant. This is something that doesn't happen. So Flutter, of course, has some interfaces to basically allow native side to take over, just um, selecting part of the UI and saying, hey, platform, please handle this, and I'm, I'm giving up control over this part of the UI, and the platform renders in this, uh, this part of the UI uh, well, performantly with native performance. And the other thing that's been added recently and is still uh, not in a stable version of Flutter, but it's uh, in a developer's uh, version of Flutter. It's foreign function interface. So ability to actually call C, C++ native code uh, or native libraries on your platform directly from Flutter. And I'm not going to show everything. This is just a part of Flutter that does a calling, but of course you need to actually either tag existing functions with some headers in C++ or Objective-C or Swift or uh, some uh, possibly C++ code in, in Android, and then load the dynamic library like, uh, like this. It's also dependent on, on the platform. And you can look up some, uh, some uh, function from the loaded libraries. So in the full example that's available there, and I'll, uh, I'll share with you on GitHub how it, uh, the, the four slides, uh, this, uh, this has more code, and basically this is an example of executing addition of two integers natively. It's useless, of course, because adding two integers isn't something you need to actually invoke native site for. Uh, but this is just, just an example of how it looks like. So 
there are these two ways, and they, uh, especially this one allows us to be really quick and really integrate with it under, underneath of, uh, of uh, operating system or libraries that we're working with. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the platforms actually. First of all, there are mobile platforms. So platforms based on either iOS or Android and some variants of it. And official support is the only for straight Android and iOS applications. But various people have been successful in running it on Android TV, on Wear OS and Watch OS. This is not as straightforward and usually involves some hacking, sometimes in C++ part, or rebuilding your engine to support whatever platform you have underneath, for example, with some compilation options. But it is possible. People have basically developed some showcase apps. The biggest challenge there is that, for example, for Wear OS or Watch OS, Flutter doesn't recognize round screens. So if you have a round watch, it will still pretend it's just a square with dimensions uh, being a diameter of, of your watch. Um, Android TV doesn't have really integrations with Android TV specific uh, libraries, so it's like a, running a mobile app on a huge screen. Yeah, and uh, currently, Currently, that's what's supported. Um, possibly, this will become official in, in some point in time. It's just not made official yet. So there are a couple of things lacking, but I think Android TV is going to be official quite soon because it's also Android and Google develops it. Now there are desktop platforms that can, Flutter can run. It. And macOS, Windows, and Linux are supported. Although macOS is only really supported, I'll talk in a, in a moment about this. And there are just several things you need to change to Flutter. I'll go through them in a demo shortly. Uh, what you need to do to actually enable, create a macOS project. And other desktop projects that are more complicated, and I will just show you uh, show you now why. Um, there is no great tooling for Windows or Linux platforms yet. So on macOS, you are able to do hot reload and actually build a, uh, build your release application. On Linux, Linux is basically a thin wrapper around OpenGL and it doesn't do really much. And uh, there is some support on Windows, but basically the only platform that works okay is Mac right now. This has been progressing over, the year, over this year, and in the beginning of the year, none of these platforms were really feasible, and you, would, you really need to go and hack away the engine to make them run on desktop. But now the macOS support is decent, I would say. It's still in developer preview stage, so Google doesn't say that they will support any backwards compatibility, like tomorrow you might wake up and Google will release a new version and say, well, it's totally not what we've done before. Um, so there's no API, no stable API, no ABI, and uh, yeah, this might really change in the future. Uh, there's no brownfield support, so apps that uh, you might want to embed, for example, Flutter parts in. So you cannot, let's say, write a Flutter view, a part of a screen, some widgets, and embed it in your current apps. Or do the other way around, no. So it's either exclusively native or uh, Flutter at this point. And yeah, there's a bit of an inconsistency between uh, in fonts, so it will in mobile Flutter ships either Roboto or I guess some San Francisco variants of fonts with that are available basically on these platforms. 
However, it relies on a default font uh, in, on desktop. So uh, on Linux, it will use different font. On uh, Windows, it was a different font. On, on Apple, it will, it will use different font, unless, of course, you embed it in the app and ship your TTFs with it. Yeah. OK, let's do it. All right, so I'll just create a sh short demo project for macOS. I'm not going to go through the mobile since it's pretty straightforward and show you this work and there are some things I, uh, you can support. So I've already done this before, so most of these comments will not do anything. I've installed Flutter. Flutter is relatively easy to install, uh, but you need to download a zip file or a tar package and unzip it somewhere. I unzipped it over there, added it to path. Um, Flutter also distributes uh, in several channels. And channels are nothing more than git tags. So it has git tags, beta, dev, master, stable, among others. But these four are considered channels, and they get basically updated when Google decides, hey, it's release time. Master channel is actually head. So as soon as the build is green, they just tag a master. And this is required for the macOS integration and uh, web integration as well. So these do not work in all the other things. Even if, if you would support them, I think there's some switch saying, hey, this is not a master build. I'm, I don't accept the, the argument. So the next thing you do is you need to configure the Flutter to tell you, hey, enable actually the functionality of running on macOS desktop, because otherwise you don't need, if you don't need macOS desktop, you don't want these files. They will just clutter. They will not help you in any development. And in tooling for Flutter, you will see macOS as an option. And you sometimes need to say, no, I don't want macOS, which is default. I want to run on my simulator all the time. So yeah, have done this. And now I'm going to create, I think like this, a new project. Possibly. Ah. Yeah. Oh, it will tell me what files it actually creates. Download the uh, necessary packages, but they are already cached in my system, so it doesn't really download anything. Great. And now let's do... All right, I also have enabled the, this, uh, the web version, so I see Chrome and Web Server. We'll go back to it in a different, uh, different time. But if I select a device dash D Mac, it will try to run the application in uh, on, on my machine. And is it going to be a default application? Uh, for for Flutter, that's uh, that's a ju just a simple counter and the button you can click. It doesn't really match. It's one screen. Yeah. It should be possible to build on Mac, but. It isn't because currently only debug mode works on on these systems, and this is ahead of time. Uh, this is just in time compiling, so I don't think it supports just in time compiling on a different architecture than your current one. 
So once release mode is available for Windows and Linux, it would be easy to basically deploy, deploy on Windows from your Mac machine and have it run on Windows. All right, it should be running something. Oh, it's on a different screen. So I'll try to somehow move it. Oh, here it is. So that's the default application. It doesn't do much apart from allowing you to click. It doesn't even allow me to click. I wonder why. It might be conflicting with another Flutter application that I'm running. Yeah, so what's the state of development? There are some quirks like this. But I'll show you later on, it's not that hard. Actually, this worked before. So I'll get back to this. But that's, that's a simple demo of how it works on should work <laughs> on Mac. So support on the web is very similar. So. Instead of Mac OS desktop, I do dash web. But web is a little bit different. So web originally started as a fork of Flutter, and only recently was it merged back into mainline. And it has, as you can see, it has only this browser layer. Instead of a whole engine and uh, embedder, it delegates most of the things to, to the browser. And it's mostly combination, it's mostly canvas when it comes to rendering something that's not text. There's some text, there's a little bit of JS running, uh, mostly for things like navigation and some events that happen around. And there's fewer things over there. And there's fewer things because Flutter, for example, doesn't support a uh, couple of things on web. So web is in really preview stage when it comes to, to developing. There's no hot reload. So hot reload, um, hot reload allows you to actually reload your app and preserve its state so that you don't need to, for example, if you have a complex app with some navigation and state coming from the web, for example, when you hot reload, it all gets preserved by the UI, gets updated. There's a hot restart, which means we don't need to shut down the uh, web server that's running our, our Flutter machine, uh, Flutter code, but it, it resets the state of your Flutter, uh, Flutter application. Uh, so there's hot restart in Flutter web, there's no hot reload. There's no support for plugins yet, and of course, FFI. So you cannot really do much with the underlying system, uh, at least not much more than, uh, than the browser allows you to do. Um, this is kind of like early stages of Cordova, I guess. So if it was just web view and you couldn't do anything because it was just web view. Uh, there's no file system access yet. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, debugging is only available with Chrome, which is not very surprising, but it's something you need to consider. If you don't have Chrome, just have it for development. Other than this, of course, you can release um, release web version as a web server or just a JS code. It bundles some JS code, and that's it. So there's no no need to uh, no need for some magic. You can run it on when any demo web server uh, you want. Um, yes. And another demo time. Let's see if I can run that thing. I won't start with anything else. I would just want to run this on Chrome. Mm. 
I have previously enabled the option, and I'm still on the master channel, so that's everything, and every precondition I need for web development. There's also another target called the web server, but the web server doesn't basically is very similar but doesn't allow you to debug anything. It will still work with other browsers, but yeah, uh, it doesn't include some debugging thing, so it's possibly a little bit faster to use web server if you don't want to debug. But currently, you most necessarily want, well, uh, almost necessarily want to debug. Uh, your web application. Oh, it's already started on the other screen. So let me show you. Uh. Hey, this one works. But the fonts are all screwed up. So these are serif fonts, basically that's a, some default of, of Chrome on the Mac. And it doesn't look anyway as pretty as uh, as the, the desktop version or mobile version. So let's get back to we are almost done, actually. There's some more. So one other thing I've mentioned in the beginning was Google Fuchsia. One of the platforms that Flutter can run on is Google Fuchsia. And it's basically an open source operating system with a fresh new microkernel, which isn't based on Linux nor any other existing uh, kernel, uh, developed by Google. and. There's not much you know about Fuchsia. There's a website, fuchsia.dev, that you can go to and try out Fuchsia yourself and see how it works, run it on your machine. But the purpose of Fuchsia isn't yet known. Like, why does Google do this? Right? It's not an easy task to have an operating system. And before that, they didn't have their own operating system. Google had internally something they called Ubuntu, so their own version of Ubuntu, but it basically was some was configuration on top of that. And there's a Chrome OS, which I wouldn't call an operating system. Um, but it's possible that Fuchsia is there to replace Android and, well, Chrome OS as well as a um, unified platform for all Google things. And Flutter is intended to be the main UI SDK running on this. So it could be that in the future, we won't be developing on Android or iOS or other things. We'll be developing for Fuchsia. And it depends on what happens. Right? Fuchsia has no timeline yet. There's no announcement. It's just silent. Even even this website was just silently put over there, and people discovered, oh, there's a website. Um, but here, it could be Google's intention to have people use Flutter now, so that they have developers for their operating system in the future. And maybe you know the Flutter apps we write today will be fine to run on Fuchsia in the future as well. But maybe that will be the end goal of Flutter itself as well. So a couple of takeaways I want you to have from this. For now, mobile support for Flutter is quite good. Uh, it's not maybe as good as native, but there are a couple of corner cases you don't want to touch with Flutter or will be extra painful in Flutter. But other than this, the UI, uh, works fine, integration works fine. And as a you know, dual platform SDK, it's quite well supported. Now for other platforms, as you could see, it's mixed. In theory, there are some platforms supported. 
the other platforms that are not supported can be used as a target for Flutter. But it's not, not official, and flat, of course, Google doesn't want to take responsibility saying, hey, you can run now or wear OS without being able to specify the circular, uh, circular <laughs> frame of your, of your application. And one thing that people, people usually on a business side thought of cross-platform technologies is that they now can disband their Android and iOS teams and have just one team that runs in a cross-platform land. This never was true and it's never true with Flutter. You will always need to integrate somehow with the underlying platform. And maybe in the future we'll be Fuchsia en engineers to actually support the Flutter as well but for now, you can just trim down, but you cannot remove your teams of uh, working on Android or iOS or any other platform and expect that Flutter team is going to, uh, Flutter knowledge is everything you just need. Okay, one other point. This is also Flutter. So this whole presentation is Flutter. Let's see if I can zoom in now. It's called multi platform. And maybe I can change something. Oh, I'm running VS Code here. Ah, that's the power of hot reload. <laughs> so Yes, this works. I know the addition thing didn't work. It may be because I was running this presentation. It didn't know it has another focus somewhere else. Uh, but yeah, uh, I developed this presentation uh, mostly today and yesterday. And I really, really enjoyed developing my presentation instead of clicking through in PowerPoint or Google Slides. Um, it's a nice thing to combine what you like developing and what you need to do, presentations. Um, and it was fairly easy. I will share this code on GitHub, so my logins are everywhere like... Let me see. So. There was supposed to be a key navigation there, but it didn't work when I zoomed in. To, like KP Stroker is where you find me, where you find me uh, on all the media, I guess. There's also a website, but don't go there. It's like mostly abandoned. Okay, thank you for joining me. Um, are there any questions? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I'm developing a project for Anders and Randy. There are multiple, uh, multiple projects doing so. Let me see if I have my Chrome still open. There is this website called R. Oh. No, it's not R. Oh. R, oh, because it opened on the other screen again. Um. It's all widgets where you can actually see the showcases of apps. And these are all apps, uh, well, that people submitted to these web pages. It's fairly a known thing, so many apps are there. Although no, some of the apps you won't see there because they're corporate and not like small, small company things. And you can see many of these run on both on Google Play and App Store. Some of them run nowhere, some are only on Google Play. Google Play is slightly more um, no. So Android apps with Flutter are exclusively, Android apps with Flutter are slightly more popular than exclusively iOS apps. But uh, it also comes that with that that Flutter is a Google technology and somehow it better integrates with other Google technologies. I don't know why. And also the iOS releasing process is not fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 
I mean, I spent a couple of days just to figure out the combination of certificates I need to have for my test flight release. What do you define by many? Many more than COBOL, I assure you. <laughs> um, so our companies in Wrocław uh, already start developing with Flatter. Uh, there are several uh, software houses in Poland that are have growing uh, Flatter support. Well, there's next year in January there's a conference dedicated to Flatter in Poland. You can go there. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so there's, there's some crowd and it's growing, especially Google, some, Google did some improvements to Flutter and uh, announced it on Google I.O. this year. And you could see a spike basically of new developers coming in and companies asking for Flutter. Uh, so I wouldn't say there are more than Android or iOS devs, of course. Um, on GitHub though, uh, Flutter, I believe, has 78,000 stars now. React Native has 82, and soon it will just flip. Uh, so it's a growing thing. It's been there in you know, stable mode for a year now, and only since last December, people started considering it like a production-ready thing. Um, so it's growing all the time, and you see more and more Flutter developers around, especially especially when you consider cross-platform applications. Not at all. If it comes to mobile, you would be really out of luck if you needed to, to go to the platform-specific things. And the other thing is, I mean, there are a couple of things that are not supported, but it's hard to actually do them, to get them supported. Uh, there was this problem, and I don't know if it's still there, that auto-populating passwords on iOS didn't work. So that was one thing. Integration with Google Maps was somewhat lacking. There was a specific package, and integration with WebView is not perfect. So there's WebView, there are actually two WebView packages having two different approaches, but one of them is more performant and the other gives you more control over what's happening uh, with the WebView. Um, but most of the time you won't go to the platform specific things unless you have some SDKs or some libraries that are written already for Android or for iOS, especially if it's party things that you want, don't want to rewrite, uh, sometimes you cannot even rewrite, you need to write these small connectors at least to, to message through um, the platform channel to the Flutter side. Of course, you can always choose to do things in Android and iOS, like do heavy lifting there. Um, it might be better for you if, for example, you have lots of people knowing iOS or Android, and then somehow only do the UI part in Flutter. Uh, Flutter on Android is just an activity, so you can integrate it also with existing apps, and iOS, I think, is something like view controller. So, so there's also a possibility of this brownfield thing. So you take just one screen, make it flatter, and, and the rest remains native. <laughs> it's. Um, I'm all, uh, that, would be, that would be the last question since I'm out of time. Um, actually, the web is something Google officially puts more focus on right now. So it's hard to say. It, I believe there's like a small team at Google that actually develops desktop support. And most of the focus on new platforms is actually to go into web. So it's... 
I don't think there's something, some, uh, something like official timeline for desktop yet. Before the release, people thought, oh yeah, it's going to be WebAssembly, but it isn't. I don't know why. Um, maybe because Flutter, Flutter actually originated from a Chrome team at Google, and they maybe knew Angular Dart then, and it was easier to, to do something in the style of Angular Dart. Um, Maybe it's going to change in the future. It's always, of course, said it's developer preview. If it now switches to tomorrow, switches to web asm. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Thank you for coming. Um, I'll be leaving soon after. But if, so, if you want to ask me some more questions, uh, just do it right after uh, uh, the presentations. And yeah, I hope you have a great time here at the conference. <laughs>